Hi, I'm Lassie and I'm teaching people a metal shaping and um, I'm back here on YouTube again and I hope I can solve uh, some questions that people are having, sending me on emails and stuff. Um, it's about the welding and people asking me if it's a welding class and I said no, it's, it's not the welding class, I can teach them, can teach you how to weld but I'm not the professional welder but I know how to get it there uh, to get a good result. And here is the key. When you're building a house, it's very important that you start with the foundation, the concrete to make that level and everything, because that's where you're going to build your house on. It's the same thing when you're welding uh, sheet metal stuff together. If you start with a rough uh, fit on the panels together, it's going to end up rough too. So you either spend the time when it's easy to do it, you spend the time before you start welding the stuff together. That is, that is the key. My opinion is that it's not so hard to learn to weld. If it's TIG welding, MIG welding, or uh, gas welding, uh, it doesn't matter so much how you're actually welding. It's the preparation that makes a good result for you, and that's what you want. It's not that you need a good weld, you need a good result of the overall with the sheet metal and the welding. So here I'm going to show you what you can do. Um, I'm going to show you the best preparation you can do, okay? So here I have done a, a test piece, so you can see. I roll it up in the English wheel, so I have a little convex shape to it. Then I bend this edge here so I can put that in, in the vise when I weld it together. After I weld it together and bend that in the brake, I cut this with electrical shear, so it's one cut. Those two pieces, they fit together perfect. It's no gap, it's just tight together. <clears throat> So what I'm going to do with a piece like this, if I'm, if I'm going to weld it together, we are not going to do this, I'm going to just talk and explain for you about this. I tack weld it together about two inches apart, then I can take the pliers off, and then I can take the hammer and the dolly to stretch those spot welds a little, and I can spot weld with a MIG welder, or a TIG welder, or, or a gas welder. If you spot weld with a MIG welder, you need to grind the welds off so it has the same thickness as the metal. I prefer to use a TIG welder and just fuse that together. <clears throat> After I have done that, I need to go back with a hammer and a dolly and I need to stretch only the weld. If you get distortion inside here on the panel, don't go in and do any work on that. What you need to do is you need to stretch the weld because every time you weld something, it shrinks after. And you need to bring that back and make it longer after you weld it. This is what I recommend to do. I'm going to show you a piece that is not a good preparation. So on this piece here, you can see that we have a gap, it's tight, little less gap, tight, bigger gap, and tight. If you're thinking that this it would be a good, good preparation, it, it's not. Because when you have a gap, and you, it's tight, gap, tight, gap, tight, when you weld that together, it's going to shrink different because you have those gaps. And you're going to end up with lots of distortion on the panel. So this is not a good sample to start with. It's a bad foundation to start with to, to weld two pieces together. What I recommend you to do is to take two pieces like this, like one foot by one foot, and roll it up both of them in the English wheel so you have a little convex shape to it. Cut it with an uh, with, with a, with a, uh, electrical shear 
or hand snips. And then you put those pieces together again and tack weld it and weld that together. And then you do one that is a little rough, that you have a little gap like this piece. So you have a little gap and tight, a little gap and tight. And then you're welding that piece together and you're going to see the difference between those two pieces. So you can compare those two pieces together so you see what makes them look different. When you understand that and can see that, then you realize how important it is to have them tied from the beginning and then just fuse it together with a TIG welder. It's another thing you can do also, if I go back to this panel here. <clears throat> if it's a panel that you can reach in with your hands and a hammer and a dolly, you can stretch it after you have welded it together. But let's say if you're having a, an area on, on a car that you're going to weld uh, in a piece and you can't reach in there with a hammer and a dolly. So you can't stretch it after you have welded it in. What do you do? Here's the solution. You can pre-stretch it in the, the, um, with a hammer and a dolly on the edge before you weld it together or if you have an access to the English wheel on the part of this that you weld it together that is free so you can take it to the English wheel and you can roll just the edge, maybe one eighth of an inch deep into one edge. You can roll that so it actually looks a little bit like that. So it's go up a little, so it's a little too long. And the other piece that is on the car that you have cut out and you still there on the car, you can take the hammer and the dolly and stretch that edge one eighth of an inch and make that little longer. So it actually looks like little like, like this. This is too big now, but if you have it just a little too big, and when you weld that together, it's going to shrink, and when you shrink, when it shrinks, it's come back to normal again, and it's going to be flat and no distortion. So you have two options. You either do the job before you weld them together, or you do the job after you weld the whole thing together. But one way or another, you must do the job. So that is two different ways to do it, and it depends on where you're working on on a car. But it's, remember that it's always shrinking when you weld stuff together. And your job to do is to stretch it even be, even bef either before or after you weld it together to make it back to normal again. And as I said before, if you get distortion on the inside here, don't touch that surface. Stretch the weld until you get rid of the bubbles on the sides. I have done that mistakes and I learned from it. So if you want more information about metal shaping classes, equipment, books, DVDs, go to www.lazymetalshaping.com. Thank you very much.